Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. One of the greatest retro gaming hardware extraordinaires on the entirety of the information superhighway. Over the last few years on the World Wide Web, we have looked at all sorts of platforms from gaming's colourful past. Amongst all of this, last year we took an in-depth look at the history of NEC's PC Engine and discussed many of the system's variants, which have been released over the years. Despite focusing in on various versions of the system, many people in the comment section noticed that I neglected to talk about the PC Engine Shuttle that day. To be fair, it is an easy system to overlook, as the platform did not sell well and it is arguably the most obscure of the PC Engines. So, with that in mind, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of the PC Engine Shuttle, and just as importantly, why it failed. Yeah. Ah, the NEC PC Engine, or how it is pronounced properly in Japan, the PC Engine. Anyway, the PC Engine, released in Japan in 1987, was a collaborative effort between NEC and Hudson Soft and was a game system designed to take on Nintendo and Sega in the home console market. The PC Engine was a huge success in Japan, outselling even the market-leading Famicom in its home country, in its first year of its existence. The PC Engine was graphically leaps and bounds ahead of its competition, and this newfound glory would eventually lead to the platform being released in North America as the Turbo Graphics. Sadly though, the system was not successfully marketed or distributed as well in the West, and due to a lack of sales in North America, the platform's presence in Europe would be even smaller as a result. Almost non-existent in fact. Despite all of this though, the platform's dizzying heights of popularity in Japan would lead to all sorts of variations, add-ons and spin-offs for the system coming to the market. Think of this variety being very similar to what Sega have on the market available at the time in the West. In fact, it would not surprise me whatsoever if much of what Sega did hardware-wise was directly inspired by that of NEC. The PC Engine gets a CD add-on, the Mega Drive gets a CD add-on, the PC Engine Duo is created, the Multi Mega and Wonder Mega are made. The similarities between the two companies' hardware pushes are as clear as day. Amongst this cornucopia of consoles, we got the main course of this video, the PC Engine Shuttle. In 1989, two years after the initial release of the PC Engine, the PC Engine Shuttle hit the market. As you can see from this video, the PC Engine Shuttle looked radically different from that of the original version of the platform. In many ways, the system is even quite spacecraft looking, which I guess is most likely where the shuttle name comes from in the first place. Amusingly, the shuttle is not the only spaceship looking system I have seen, as I also have the Amstrad GX4000 amongst my collection too. In fact, it is quite sad I have not used green screens to shoot a George Lucas-like dogfight between these two consoles. Anyway, so why was the PC Engine turned into a spaceship, you may be asking? Well, the answer to this is quite simple. Firstly, it was to make the platform further appealing to children, which can equally be noted from looking at the artwork on the box the system came in too. The illustrations on the box depicts dozens of cartoon images of children playing with a variety of different objects, from sports equipment, skateboards to even musical instruments. Everything about this device is very squarely aimed at a younger demographic. This change in design was further beneficial to NEC as manufacturing costs on this device were significantly lower than with the traditional PC Engine as this variant of the device lacks the rear expansion port for the CD-ROM 2 and is thus, as a result, incompatible with most of the system's add-ons. Amusingly, despite lacking in functionality compared to a regular PC Engine and being much cheaper for the company to produce, 
the PC Engine Shuttle was just as expensive for a consumer to procure than that of a regular PC Engine anyway. So there was a much bigger profit margin for NEC to make any time they successfully sold a shuttle over a regular model. Despite the system's shortcomings, it is of note that the PC Engine Shuttle was the first standalone variant of the PC Engine available that featured an AV output. Further to this, the Shuttle came with bespoke controllers that vary from regular PC Engine controllers. These joypads featured curves along the bottoms, rather than the ugly NES-like rectangular finish of the traditional controllers. Another difference between the Shuttle and the original model was that there was no way of saving game data in the regular way with the Shuttle, as the standard add-ons, as stated, were not compatible with the system. Instead, you needed to procure a special Shuttle memory backup unit, which would incur further cost to consumers. These are outrageously costly if you want one today. Obviously, with this model of PC Engine, as stated, it is not compatible with any of the CD games for the system. However, as expected, it does accept the system's credit card-like Hue cards to run games from. Like with the original PC Engine, you can slot Hue cards straight into the front of the shuttle. What is rather novel here, though, is that you open a window-like protector before placing the games inside. The protector does not seem to offer much in the way of functionality, but it does add to the shuttle-like aesthetic at the very least. So as you can now see from what I have told you, the PC Engine shuttle had very little to offer in terms of the bells and whistles required in order to tickle consumers' fancies. The PC Engine shuttle is literally and purposely the baby's toy of PC engines and not a lot of people were stupid enough back in the day to pay full PC Engine prices for this cut down version of the system just because it was shaped like a bloody spaceship of all things. It wasn't the bloody space race anymore, this was a bloody late 80s. It is no surprise whatsoever that the PC Engine shuttle failed to land successfully back in 1989. Today though is a slightly different story with nerdy collectors everywhere looking to pay over the odds to add this obscure piece of tat to their collections. Due to the system's rarity, this variant of the PC engine will cost buyers a lot more money than simply procuring a more functional, more practical variant of the system. But then again, I suppose that is collecting for you in general. Rarity does usually end up being a higher priority than practicality. So it is no wonder that the shuttle is slowly becoming more and more sought after. Speaking of mad collectors, the shuttle featured in this video, amongst other oddities recently featured on the channel, such as the Megajet and the Wonder Mega, were all kindly lent to me to show all of you by Quang of Asobi Tech. Quang has the largest games console collection in the UK and he has recently channeled his love further for gaming by launching this fantastic line of t-shirts right here. He is releasing a new t-shirt with a different design on Twitter every single week. So no matter which system you love, Pocket Pixel Designs will have a t-shirt lined up to match your bespoke taste. Links are in the description if you want to grab one of these of your very own. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is the story of the PC Engine Shuttle and why it failed. It was essentially an overpriced, dumbed down version of the system aimed at the children's market. If you enjoyed today's video, why not check out my video on the PC Engine GT next, which funnily enough, I also borrowed from Quang. Do not forget to like, comment and subscribe and indulge in all other social media nonsense that helps this little channel grow. Finally, my channel Top Hat Gaming Man is funded by the fantastic support I receive from the amazing Patreon benefactors who continuously go above and beyond to preserve this channel's life. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Shizuka Kobayashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, Lawrence C, Seabass the Great, Synth Spaces, Kevin Verhaley, Andrew Bozanski, Ed O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, 
Mark S. Hines, The Gaming Muso, Quang DX, Spudmat B, Michael Baker, and all of my other patrons. Thank you all so much.